God gave his plans for the temple to David through the Spirit because it was the Spirit that put the plans in his mind. So if the Spirit can do that for David, the Spirit can do that for you. The Spirit wants to give you ideas. It wants to bless you with creativity. It wants to be interacting with you. And it can interact with you about the details of measurements for things. It's hard to imagine that, but it is a way in which we can interact with God. Then there's a lot of the Spirit that shows up in the prophets with Isaiah, with Ezekiel, with Zechariah, Joel, and Michael. So this idea of Spirit and Trinity shows up even in the Old Testament. Now, one of the trickier pieces is, okay, so where does Jesus show up in the Old Testament? Well, one of the obvious ones that no one can disagree with is in prophecy, that there are so many prophecies that are just pointing the way to God's plan to bring Jesus into the world. Now, the interesting part is, even aside from prophecies, there are some ideas that talk about Jesus showing up in the Old Testament. And if you want to talk to me more about that later, I will. I love talking about it. But for now, that's another whole sermon, and we have to keep moving. So you can go to the next slide. So we looked at the Gospel lesson today from John 14. And that helps to explain to us a little bit about the roles of the Trinity and how they interact together. That Jesus talks about the fact that he and the Father are one. So they, when he speaks, it's as if the Father is speaking. And then he speaks about the way that he wants to give glory to God. So that was part of Jesus' role, to give glory to God. The Holy Spirit then was going to be sent to help us to understand the things that Jesus had taught. And the Holy Spirit's role was to help to explain Jesus, to help to glorify Jesus. And that's where his role is sometimes so much more subtle in our lives. We have to listen for that quiet voice of God to be able to hear him or to understand him because he's not going to be pushy but he will start to explain the deeper truths is what the bible tells us that the holy spirit explains the deeper truths of god in the psalm that lindsay read for us it talks about where can i go from your spirit or where can i flee from your presence and this can either be really scary or really comforting depending on where you're at with god if you're not wanting to be in God's presence, it can be really tough to realize that God's Spirit is everywhere and you really can't escape Him. You might think you can. You can bury your head in the sand, not see, but you can't. He's everywhere. He's not going to push His way into your life, but He's there and He sees and He sees you and He cares about you. But again, if it's like that storm pitcher or that guy reaching down to pull the person out of the water, if you are actually wanting God's presence in your life, how ultimately comforting are those scriptures, that section of verses that tell us that there is no way that we can escape His Spirit. His Spirit is there for us. It is always available, always there for us. The Bible gives us the imagery of the Holy Spirit coming as a dove uh, at Jesus' baptism. That Jesus came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended as a dove. So sometimes this is the obvious picture that we have of the Spirit, but it doesn't seem like a really powerful picture. You can go to the next slide. Sorry, I had them in a different order than I thought. So I'm going to still talk about that bird a little bit. So sometimes because we have this image of bird, it can feel a little weak. It's a little small. Maybe it's not a big deal. But it's God that we're talking about. And that was just one way in which the Holy Spirit came. There were many others. Romans 8, if you were to study that, it talks so much about the freedom that we can have through the Holy Spirit, the way that it helps to free us from sin in our lives, and the way in which we can claim victory. We can claim victory because of what the Holy Spirit does. The Romans passage also lets us know that it was the power of the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And sometimes we forget that the Trinity was so involved in the pathway to salvation that it was all three aspects working together to bring about 
what we call salvation, that Christ, yes, came, that the Father sent him, that Christ was obedient to him, that Christ died, and the power of God working through the energy of the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. So there's this idea that the Holy Spirit is a divine energy. And that ability to work in all aspects of the world, to work in our bodies, to work in our lives emotionally and spiritually, but also physically, to also be working in creation, in the world, um, to be working at a level that often we don't recognize or talk about in this idea of energy. Now, this is where I start to throw an idea out just that might sort of trigger some conversation later on in the day or in your life or may cause you to do a little bit of thinking. Now, when I talk about Dr. Oz, I don't watch Dr. Oz because I'm not home from work in time to watch Dr. Oz on TV, but I know some people do. And one of my friends quoted to me that he said that the next frontier of medicine is energy medicine. And how much more do Christians have the ability to speak to this idea because we know where the ultimate energy comes from? So I'll just leave that thought with you. And then we come back to that image of the dove. And I just love the way that, although it's a weak image, um, it is how we picture the Holy Spirit. And to have him hovering, I don't know if those of you at the back can see that, but hovering over all of the earth. Um, God's Spirit is everywhere. God Himself is everywhere and caring for us. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. The way that you, in your words, start to give us glimpses into understanding more of who you are in three persons, that we can discover more about you when we study the verses in your Bible. I thank you, God, for what you have done by loving us, creating us, creating this world, the way that you have sent Jesus to die for our sins, um, the way that your Holy Spirit was the power which raised him from the dead. I thank you, God, for the way in which we continue to have relationship with you now, and that your Holy Spirit wants to continue to reveal the deeper truths of you to us. So God, we thank you for the, this power that's available. And God, we come to you now knowing that we have this power to bring our request to you. And we pray for those of us who are suffering in our midst. God, you know how absolutely painful it must be for the family of Roy Schnur right now. God, I pray that you would be upholding that family as they have to go through the details of visitation and funeral that you would be bringing peace and comfort to their hearts in the midst of grief and pain. I pray that you would be sustaining them and getting them through to a time when they could have a little rest or a little relaxation to be able to truly deal with the emotions that right now just are probably hidden in shock. So God, I really pray that you would be with that family. And for those that might be sick in our midst, I pray that you would be bringing healing. For those that are hurting, I pray that you would be bringing resolution to the situations in their life. For those who are confused or stumbling in their walk with you, I pray that you would be reaching out for them and lifting them up out of the waters that seem to be coming over their head. God, I thank you that you answer our prayers and that you are here with us now. Amen.